So this project uses a 1x10 piece of knotted pine, which I got at the big box store for about 10 bucks. The first step is to cut them down to 30 inches, and then joint two edges, which will glue up in some clamps. This joint doesn't require any kind of biscuits or pocket holes or anything like that. The glue is plenty strong enough on its own. I added a pair of F clamps to each end just to keep the boards in line as best I could, and also a bar clamp across the middle to kind of act as a cull. Now after the glue was dry for about two hours, I removed the clamps and hit it with a hand plane just to knock off the high spots and a bit of the glue. I then came back with some 80 through 220 grit, sanded everything, and then stained everything with a black poly shade dye. Okay, so what I've done here is designed up the sign that I want to engrave in Fusion 360. I'm using AutoCAD 2017 just because it's what I'm comfortable with. You could use free programs such as SketchUp or Fusion 360 itself to design this. Now let's go and import this into Fusion. I simply click Upload, select my file, open, and hit Upload. This will take a little bit of time. It's all done, we can hit close, eventually, oh, there's the thumbnail, and double click this to open it. So I don't like to see this as the front is this direction, so I'm gonna click on front, hit this drop down menu, say current view set as top. So now this is showing the bottom, which is gonna be the bottom of the CNC machine. This is the way I prefer to look at things. So we're gonna go into our cam, Say so setup, new setup, and we're gonna change the stock box to fixed size. We're gonna call it 30 inches wide, 18 inches tall, and we know it's 0.75 inches thick or three quarters of an inch. So this will give us room in each of the four corners to put a screw to hold the stock in place while it's being milled. Back at our setup, we're gonna change the orientation, which is currently somewhere in the middle. We always set it, or at least I always set it, to the top left bottom corner. Z is up, Y, X are in the right positions. Okay. So now we're going to go into our 2D engrave. We're going to select a tool. And right here you see I've already created a chamfer bit. Let's quickly go through how it's made. Edit tool. So under general we just write the description, what the vendor is. Under cutter we're going to select a chamfer mill. Now, do not select a countersink bit because it won't work with the engrave function. So chamfer mill, number of flutes two, carbide, no coolant, clockwise, inches. So now over here, we're gonna set the angle to 45 degrees. This could be different. You could have say a 60 degree V groove bit or something like that. The top diameter 0.5 and the bottom is zero. So it's gonna come exactly to a point. All the other dimensions you can fill out yourself. Shaft holder, don't care. Feeds and speeds. The spindle speed, again, my router is 10,000 RPM, and we're gonna say it can handle 40 inches per minute. The plunge feed is a little slower, and the ramp feed is a little slower as well. Post process is fine, okay. So we're gonna select that bit. It's automatically now populated everything over here. Coolant's disabled. Let's go into geometry. So here we're simply gonna select the top of everything that we want cut out. Now it's very important when selecting letters with cutouts in them, you need to select the outside and the inside. Oh, I missed this one. Okay, it now looks like we have everything selected here. We'll go into heights, and it looks like everything is fine. The bottom height, it's saying, is gonna be almost a quarter inch into the piece, that's fine. Passes, everything else here is fine. You can adjust it if you want to. Linking, we're gonna say keep tool down, that's fine. Okay, so everything should generate perfectly after this. All right, so 
let's go in and say simulate turn our stock on and see how it works so far it's looking like it's doing a great job let's see how it does the letters so you see that it actually took a pass because the width of the W here is wider than half inch which was the top of our router bit so it took a pass on this side and then a pass on the left as well same thing for this section and that looks absolutely perfect that's what we're going to end up with let's hit close say post process make sure our g28 is turned off all this other stuff looks good mach 3 mil and we'll change it to say family board 30 wide by 18 tall by 0.75 thick V groove bit. Now I just write all that stuff there so I'm reminded when I'm loading the program out in the garage of what size stock this is supposed to be and what bit I'm supposed to be using. And we'll just hit post and it'll generate our G code for us. And say save it on the desktop. So here we are in our Mach 3 software. We're simply going to load the G code that we just made. So what we need to do with this code right now is under the G54, it still thinks it's at our origin position, which is the bottom left top corner. So it's going to immediately try going right to this first point, X2, Y1, whatever. So we need to go and edit the code under G54. We need to say G0, Z1. And this is going to raise up the bit so it clears before going to its first coordinate. And we'll hit save, close this. Here, let's go into toolpath, make this bigger. And you can see this first red line. We scroll down past all this crap, get to the G54. First thing it does is goes up, and then it goes over, clearing our stock and our screws and anything else that's in the way. And now we simply just mount our piece of stock to the board and run our code. So in order to mount my stock, I always start with a screw in the bottom left, bring my z-axis over to that origin point, lift it up a little, and go all the way to the right on that piece of stock. Then I'm going to line up the stock with the bit, making sure that the x-axis is totally in parallel with the gantry. Then I add in the other three screws to keep everything in place. The router is then brought over to the origin point at the 00, zero location, the bottom left top corner, and the code is run. Now that the gantry is moved out of the way, I can remove the four hold down screws and bring it over to the table saw to trim off those pieces of excess stock that were holding the piece in place. So in order to create a border around this sign, I ripped down some rectangular pieces off a 2x6. I then marked everything in place and cut to length on the chop saw. Everything was sanded to 220 grit before it was glued on as the inside edges will be very hard to sand after it's all glued in place. As you can see, I'm using a couple pieces of scrap wood between the clamp and the border as to create pressure on the lower part and also to reduce indenting of the wood because this is soft pine. After everything is done being glued up, I flip it over and scrape off the excess glue with a chisel. And now it's time to reposition the clamps lengthwise to glue on the two ends. These are about a 13th of an inch too long and they will be sanded flush after the glue up is complete. The last thing to do is to go over everything with some 220 grit sandpaper and the finish I went for was just to simply spray on some polyurethane. 